Uh, my name is Jeremy Fisher. I'm the president of the Warren Area Democratic Club. I'd like to start by thanking everybody for coming out tonight. Thank you to the candidates for coming and participating in this event. Uh, we've got a couple of local elected officials. We're going to give just a couple minutes to talk uh, who helped pull together, uh, together both this event um, and the Warren Area Democratic Club. So we're going to start out uh, with Representative Pat Green. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you for everyone coming out tonight. Uh, again, my name is Pat Green. I'm the state representative from this district, District 28. And, uh, I'm very proud to have all of you here. Um, tomorrow will most likely will be our last day in Lansing. We're going to have 90 votes tomorrow, plus the budget. And it's ugly up there. Uh, there's a thing called local control, allowing your local units of government, your, your city councils, your county governments to manage themselves, to the people who live in the cities and in the counties to have control of the direction that they want their cities to go in, whether they want their city to allow Airbnbs in their borders or at least regulate them, if they want to have tow yards or they want to have anything, if they want to make sure that they have good contractors who are working for you at your house, that they be licensed and that they go through certain qualifications. Those are things that local governments all want to do. I came from local government. The state of Michigan and the Republican-led legislature doesn't want that. They want to tell you that you can't make those decisions. You're not qualified to make those decisions. They take those rights away from you every single day. We have bills tomorrow on local licensing that are absolutely awful. They're going to take away the rights of your city to be able to regulate local contractors, occupational licenses, and take away the rights for you to be able to go and find redress from your local units of government. Now, it doesn't even matter, go back to last week with the repeal of prevailing wage, which is awful, with uh, Medicare work requirements, which were terrible to begin with, and they said they made them better, but it's, it's not. There's things coming up that, that we're extremely concerned about. There's increases in healthcare costs that are gonna be hitting in July, and we're really, really focusing on that. Um, we all know how bad the roads are, and we're glad to see some of them getting worked on. Uh, but there's not enough money. It's, it's just not been done right. Coming from local government and seeing, you know, when you have a project, or, or you come from business, and, you know, someone has the best idea in the world. And <coughs> when I have someone in my company come up to me and say, I've got a great idea. I say, great, did you take it to finance? If finance says it works, then bring it to me. Don't bring it to me and make me vote for of finance. And that's a problem we have. We have a broken financial system. And, we have people in state government who don't understand how to fund things in a systemic and perpetual way. You've seen the billboards downtown about auto insurance. How many people here think auto insurance is too small, too low? Anybody? <laughs> Want to pay more? I own an insurance agency, so I, I, I wouldn't mind it. All the proposals that we've seen out of Lansing talk about no fault is the problem. No fault is not the problem. Premiums are the problem. The money you have to pay. And all the proposals we see coming from the Republican-led legislature talks about we got to get rid of no fault. We have to put a cap on no fault. All that's doing is taking one side of a balance sheet and saying, I'm going to reduce the insurance company's liabilities. There's no conversation whatsoever on the revenue side, the premiums you pay. So any bills that we see that we want to argue on and say, you know, maybe we can find something to work that reduces your premiums with a corresponding reduction in the liability for the insurance companies. That doesn't come up whatsoever. All we hear is reduce their side of the balance sheet, not yours. You keep paying. And that's not right. And that's what we're fighting for. So that's what's going on. We we're really looking forward to hearing from the candidates tonight. And I'd like to turn it over to uh, State Senator Steve Beaver. We're being covered by Fox News. I didn't know that. How, how's everybody doing today? Well, you sound really, what, what, how's everybody doing today? All right. Well, it's great to be here, and uh, I, I uh, want to echo some of the sentiments uh, by my good colleague from the House of Representatives, Pat Green. Uh, we definitely have a challenge up in Lansing, and uh, some of it is the dialogue, and some of it is the perspective. Uh, when we're talking about insurance, what I see is cutting insurance coverage. What I see from the Republican side is capping. There's a proposal there that would cap your insurance coverage to $50,000. That's, that's crazy, that, that's, that's not even a trip to the hospital, a really bad situation. 
We have to have a very true and very realistic discussion on that, though, because that is an issue that hits us all in the pocketbook. That is an issue that is so important to the vibrancy of our communities. We're seeing it in here in Warren, and we're seeing it in other areas in the metropolitan Detroit area where insurance rates are so astronomically high. But the discussion is not really on the premiums. The discussion is all about cutting what the coverage is. And that needs to be a more balanced approach on it. And I've been real fortunate. I'm, uh, I'm concluding, uh, it doesn't seem that long, but it, but it is, uh, 14 years serving in the, uh, well, six years in the House, and uh, at the end of this year, will be eight years in the State Senate. I'm running for a countywide position, uh, clerk uh, registered deeds for the county. Uh, I have a lot of experience doing issues related to that at the state level. Certainly, election law has been a big uh, factor that I've always focused on. Last uh, several, well, this last session, I've introduced legislation again for the seventh time, uh, calling for no excuse absentee voting, but also, and particularly in light of the Supreme Court decision that came out yesterday, uh, for same day voter registration. Because if you saw the Supreme Court decision that came out yesterday, it would allow states to purge inactive voters from from the voting rolls, and it gives, from my reading of it, pretty free reign for the states to do that. Uh, it's ridiculous to me that you have to file, to, if you're not registered to vote, 30 days before an election. And I can't think of too many things that you require 30 days before to do anything. I know when I started working, government started taking taxes out of my paycheck that first day. <laughs> Anybody have any other experience on doing that? <laughs> well, it only makes sense that if we're voting, and you're old enough to vote, that you should be able to register to vote the same day or the day before the election if you're not registered to vote yet. And that's really important because as we've seen in this country, in this state, there's been a decline in voter participation. And that's that's wrong. And that's actually very dangerous. There's a political scientist by the name of Charles Wilson who's written about this pretty exclusively. And he talks about how people become sort of detached from the system, a governmental system that they start losing faith in, in their governmental institutions. And voting is a clear sign of that. And if we look at what's happened to voting over the years, you've seen a precipitous decline in people going out to vote. And some of it is some of these artificial barriers we put up to it. 30 days, we're one of the few states that, that has 30 days. There's 15 states that have same-day voter registration right now. Michigan should be one of those. That's something that I've been pushing for. Uh, I don't want to speak too much because they, they told me I can only speak for five minutes. And it seems like they may have done that already. But I, I wanted to take a, a moment to thank the board here, of all the board members of the Warren Area Dubs, and particularly Jeremy Fisher, who is uh, instrumental in starting this. I can have little bragging rights here as I'm the first charter member of the Warren Area Dubs. And I, I did that first $100 check. So if you've got a little money on you want to help this group out a little bit, uh, pay some dues, uh, do a donation. Um, your activity in this group is very, very uh, important for its vibrancy. It's been a great organization, considering it's just a little over three years old. I think we're showing a lot of progress here. And it's gonna be something that's gonna be very important in this upcoming election. So I encourage you all to, uh, let's, let me throw a challenge out there. Um, I'll sign up, here, put your hand up like this, okay? I'm not, it's nothing weird, I'm not gonna ask you to do something strange. Just put your hand up. I want you all to pledge to bring in one new member in the next six months. While well, you have your hand up there, uh, vote for Steve Bita. And all that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, sounds good to me. <laughs> anyway, I want to thank you for the opportunity to speak. I want to thank our fine candidates for coming out here today. I know not everybody can make it some conflicts of uh, scheduling, but uh, I know how important it is uh, to reach out to the voters. I also know how difficult it is living the life of a candidate, having a chance to go around and, and talk to all the different people. I think it's a really important uh, part of our process. I was thinking about this earlier today, it's sort of like, well, this is only June, and I've still got to go through August, and then if I'm successful in August, I have to go through November, and uh, these elections, they're, they're pretty grueling. So I give them your apt attention and your utmost uh, applause, frankly, for anybody who puts themselves through this. And this goes for all the candidates in the room, um, because it is a it is an endeavor to do that, and we're very fortunate as Democrats to have so many good people running for so many different offices. With that, thank you again for the opportunity to speak. It's always great to be here today. Thank you. Thank you.